you love dance because it shows you where you're not free. Mm -hmm. The way that you move your body, the way that you play main character, the way that you allow yourself to be big. I'm everything I want to be in life when I dance. Mm -hmm. And it's the internal battle of allowing myself to be that everywhere all the time. Your doubt isn't going to go away. Your people pleasing might not go away completely. We all care what people think of us, let's be honest. And how are you operating anyways? That's what's inspiring. I was probably the one pinning the quotes about being unapologetic, and I've only been apologetic. Same. Is this yeah. okay with you? Is everyone comfortable here? Yes. I would do anything to get in rooms. The hard thing for me has been owning that I deserve to be there. That's the work that has taken all of me. Tansy Spencer, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Yay. I feel like this is such a long time coming. Yes. We've talked about doing this for a while, and I'm actually so grateful it happened in this season where I'm recording in person, and we happened to be in the same city. Yeah, that's crazy. So obviously meant to be. Yes. Okay, I don't even really know where to start with you and with just who you've been for me before we even knew each other, because you are the creator of Turn Up Dance Fitness. You are also just actually one of my biggest expanders when it comes to like why I love dance and how it helps me tap into like a form of self-expression that I didn't realize I was missing. And you had this post recently where you were talking about how it was like the sentiment of it was you love dance because it shows you where you're not free. Mm -hmm. Will you like just share a little bit more about that as like it relates to your journey as a dancer too? For sure. First of all, I... I'm just soaking this up right now. I love you so much and you have been such a friend and someone I look up to so much. And I've been like emotional all morning being here and getting the opportunity to like sit with you and talk about life and all the things. And I just appreciate how real that you always are and how you see me and how you see people. And I just admire that so much. Um, but when it comes to being free, so I'm, I didn't grow up a dancer. I played basketball and when I graduated, I became a teacher. And then I, long story short, ended up creating this business and I decided to become a dancer. Like I was not yeah. ever that. I actually refused to call myself that for a long time. But I think in dance, now being in LA with these dancers that live it, I realize how it's a modality or like a vessel that reveals where I'm hiding or where I'm playing small. It's like an actual metaphor, the way that you move your body, the way that you play main character, the way that you allow yourself to be big or not, the way I stand in the back. There's so many like things that I do in a dance class that reveal the way that I'm hiding in all of my life. And yeah. I feel like when I watch you in your journey, I think that's something that I saw that you noticed about yourself too, is the more you tapped into allowing yourself to just authentically express yourself through that class, you felt empowered in other areas of your life. And I think that's so cool. It actually has been so humbling, I think, because mm, yes, and it's so funny because we've had these conversations with each other where I would much rather be on a stage with a microphone, like delivering a keynote than <laughs> I would, especially being on stage, like just especially if it's not choreography that I can follow to the leather, it's more the letter, it's more freestyle where like that's where you shine. It's it's almost like an alter ego. It, it isn't because it's you. It's part of you. But the way you come alive and it's like. We get to see you in your element and we've shared that with each other. And I think that's why dance has been such a big tool for me in this season, because it humbles me to realize how as much as I have grown so much in my confidence and I do feel embodied as a leader in a lot of ways, that brings me right to where I still am really self-conscious. I have trouble dancing when there's a mirror in front of me. I dance differently when there's a mirror and when there's not. So that you're right, there's like so many parallels to showing me where it's not like there's something wrong with me. There's just room for growth mm -hmm. for me to like fully step into who I'm supposed to be. Cause I don't think I would notice it as an issue if it wasn't a pathway to my growth. When you talk about 
dancing in front of the mirror versus not? What do you think that is? It's probably tied. I'm like, let's analyze this. I think um, noticing how much my inner dialogue is always focused on where I could be doing things better. Some of it has to do with like my physical body. It kind of depends. That actually seems to be more honestly like cyclical, like with my menstrual cycle. When I'm ovulating, I feel pretty hot. And then when (laughs) I'm not, you know, it's like it feels different. So sometimes it's actually like how I physically look. But I think it's I am so tapped into this version, this like higher self version of me that is more free. And then I think it's hard for me to see the current version of myself now and realize how far I am. And it's, I mean, it's an actual mirror, not just even a philosophical one. It's a mirror showing me where I still have work to do and finding grace for myself in that process Mm -hmm. has been a lesson. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. I think that I feel that way in the things that you do really well, like in speaking Mm. on stages and stuff. I feel like that that's a hard place for me to look at myself in the places that I am still holding myself back or not feeling strong and confident in. Whereas in dance, I feel like I've gotten my reps in and I I do feel myself. And I think that's why I love it so much. Like I feel like I'm most myself Mm -hmm. when I'm doing that. But it's funny because I think a lot of people think that I'm this like super confident extra big like good time and I think that I'm everything I want to be in life when I dance Mm -hmm. and it's the like internal battle of allowing myself to be that everywhere all the time Mm -hmm. in all the ways that I can that I still battle I feel that on such a deep level Mm -hmm. I feel like that's one of the things that I love like when you talk about people being real Like you are that for me too. It's like the way you share about your journey and you're such an amazing writer, like the captions that you'll write on your social media posts, then visually showing, like you're so authentic with showing yourself when you were first becoming an instructor and when you were uncomfortable in your body. Talk a little bit about that journey because anyone who's just meeting you now or seeing your Instagram now and unless they're seeing that post, it's so easy to look at anyone that's like, you or I, and just assume we just woke up like this. And I know like you, just like me, you fought so hard for this version of yourself. Yes. Oh my gosh. I was just talking about this to my sister because I truly feel like if I were to just post my dances of me killing it, like no one would care. I don't feel like, I sometimes feel like the posts where I'm killing it are the ones that I'm really proud of because I know what what it took. I know the room I was in. I know what it's supposed to look like. And I'm like, I'll watch it like 20 times, maybe more than 20. Yeah. But I think that- I'm glad like, I'm not the only one. Yeah. Like, look at how good I am. Celebrating. Yes. yes. Look at how good, this, one more time, one more time. Um, but I think without, I'm so proud and thankful that I showed up before I felt comfortable in my skin and just did what I loved with passion because now I can look back and now people celebrate even more Mm -hmm. my growth and they came along with me really. Like I feel like they're my biggest fans because they've been a part of the journey to get there. And I think I remember being a teacher and I remember like I would grab my stomach all the time when I was teaching and because I was just so uncomfortable in my body. And I would like, I felt like if I were to just touch it enough that it might feel better or something, I don't even know what was going on in my head, but I was just so uncomfortable in my skin that I remember a student asked me if I was pregnant. And Mm. in that moment, I think I realized that it was my story that was actually creating this discomfort. Whereas like, I didn't necessarily, if I were to have hold, held myself differently, if I were to have loved myself differently, they might've been like, damn coach. Uh, they call me coach. You looking good today or something, you know, yeah. like, and it was all based on the way I was perceiving myself and loving myself. But I think that I got to this place of discomfort in my skin because I was doing everything for everybody else and not chasing my own dreams and not taking care of myself. And I feel like what I didn't realize I needed was the journey to live life the way I wanted. And then the byproduct of that was the results of the physical 
like tangible part of losing weight or feeling like my butt's perky or anything like that. Yeah. Know? I mean, listen, we all want a perky butt. You know, still working on it. Still working, <laughs> still working on it. Always. <laughs> okay. I want you to take us back to that. I don't know that it's a moment, right? I think we we all expect that like there's just going to be this moment where all of a sudden we tap into that and we start taking different actions. Take me back to that season, that version of you. And when was the decision to start showing up differently? Was it Was it a moment? Was it small actions over time? How did you go from being a teacher, a basketball coach, uncomfortable in your own skin Mm -hmm. to fast forward years and a lot of reps later, this confident version of yourself that's still a work in progress, but the version that that girl would have looked up to, Mm -hmm. what's like in between? Because I I can hear people listening, whether they're on a business journey or whether they're on a journey of self-love or body love and having trouble seeing, okay, what's A to B Mm -hmm. in this journey? Yeah. I think what needs to happen is you need to get so sick and tired of being sick and tired of your own shit. And I think I just, I do a really great job of getting myself to a very low place. Cause I think a lot of us were uncomfortable, but we're still comfortable enough to keep moving. And it's like that discomfort, the discomfort, I couldn't do it anymore. Like, and I've hit rock bottom so many times from A to B in losing myself, in putting myself in a position to where I have to question myself and ask myself, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Who am I? What matters to me? And the patterns are revealed to me of who I am and what I'm doing. And in in revealing those patterns to myself, I, I feel like that's when I move differently is hitting that moment of like, I can't do this anymore. I gotta move differently. And I don't know that that I would never give advice to do that to like hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. But I would also say put yourself in a position to be super uncomfortable and recognize that we've normalized a lot of things that aren't normal and to expand yourself and see to be able to see that for what it is, is really revealing. And then I do remember one specific time I had just gotten a divorce. I had just moved back to Michigan from Florida And I was in network marketing at the time. And I remember I was going to the bank. When we used to go to the bank. Do you go to the bank When you actually had to go to the bank? Yeah. Yeah, Barely ever. Yeah. So I was going to the bank and I remember I was about to, I don't know what I was about to do actually at the bank. Who knows? But I remember looking in the rear view mirror and I remember looking at myself. And as you speak on this so much of becoming the version of yourself that you want to be right now, like to stop waiting. And I was at a point in my life where I was like, well, when I have this many followers, then I'll be able to like swear on my story. Like, I remember thinking that. (laughs) That's a very Midwest thought for us to have. I'm sure, yeah. (laughs) I'll I'll be so unapologetic and I'll be be saying the F word on my story when I have this many followers. Or when I lose this amount of weight, I will be able to be the health coach that I'm supposed to be or whatever it is. Like, there are so many things that I was waiting for. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror and being like, you know what? I'm just going to embody that right now. Like, I um, I can envision myself looking at myself in the rear view mirror. And I remember a flip of a switch in that moment. Mm. And I had super big growth from that moment forward and a lot of downfalls in between. But I think I allow myself to make mistakes so much. And I think that that I attribute so much of my growth to that. I love how you speak to that because sometimes it is in a moment that the decision is made And then it's continuing to come back to that moment and reinforce it because as you start to take those new new actions and you start to make mistakes, that's when the old programming can kick back in and be like, see, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So we've talked a little bit about this just in our friendship about you're someone who is seeking out expansion, even in this season, like so many people could look at you and say you're at the top of your game and you're killing it and you have this amazing business. You're always putting yourself in spaces to be uncomfortable. It's why you're in LA right now. Like you're mm-hmm. challenging yourself as a dancer and and growing and expanding. How much has that been a part for you? Because even if I think we had you know similar upbringings, Midwest, very different conversation around growth than the communities that we're in now, I can just like tap into the energy of that girl in the car, the rear view mirror. And when you start to show up as her, it starts to ruffle feathers. 
So I think that it has never been hard for me to get in the room. I think that's a part of the reason why I wanted to do it was I was the one who was always at the events. Like that's what I lived for. Like the pictures of all the women like holding each other being like, "Ah." you know, like I remember scrolling on Instagram and being like, that's what I want. I want that. Yeah. And so I would do anything to get in rooms. I think the hard thing for me has been owning that I deserve to be there and not playing a role of like, oh my gosh, I I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe that I'm surrounded by such amazing people and and I'll sit there and I'll just shrink and be this little girl looking up to these people Mm. instead of, and I could cry right now. I'm very emotional today because being here with you and I just think life, all the life things, but to own that, Like I deserve to be sitting here talking to you and realizing that like, yeah, I'll get myself in the rooms, but the, the work to own that, like I bring something to the room that like, you're lucky to have me in this room. That's the work that has taken all of me and I'm still working on it. (laughs) And it's so real because I think we hear that thrown around a lot. Put yourself in the room, but we're not talking about how a lot of the shit comes up once you actually step into the room and it's mirroring back where, you know, same as I was saying with dance, it's like showing me where, okay, great, you put yourself here and you're doing the uncomfortable thing. And now you just opened up this awareness of how much more growth there is to do. Yes. We can either allow that to crumble us or we can allow it to inspire us. And I think that's the energy that I've always loved and admired from you is you use that to inspire you. It lights a fire under your ass and I see it. Yeah. I watch it. I I think that that's a, a major key alert. Even when it comes to self-doubt, mm-hmm. I think so many people stop themselves from doing big things because they doubt themselves or they doubt that they have X, Y, Z and they'll use that as the reason why they don't. And I'm like, that is a gift. It is a strength. It is why you will end up being great because you doubt that you are that your work is good enough. So it's not doubting whether you're good enough, but the constant doubt of whether or not the work that I'm providing or the the things that I'm creating are good enough is what makes me great because I'm never satisfied. And I would just tell everyone to begin using your doubt as your superpower. Mm. And I think it's like a flip of the switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can either be the thing that proves that we're right, that we don't belong in spaces, we we have no business doing something, or it can be the thing that actually propels us to prove ourselves wrong. Yeah. I never really thought about it that way. It actually makes me think about, so one of my favorite part of Turn Up Classes, your dance fitness format is it's a culture that's really grounded in purpose and there's an intention. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of every class that I've taken, shout out to big kid, Rick. We love him. Love I take his class in Phoenix and he shares really what turn up stands for. And one of those is evolve unapologetically. Mm -hmm. Where did you come up with, you can share the full motto, but you can, I want to hear where you came up with that and actually what it means to you specifically to evolve unapologetically. Listen, (laughs) <laughs> um, I like this already. I'm pretty sure it was a quote that I saw when I Googled Googled something. <laughs> Motivational quotes for business. Yeah. And I was like, that's the one. Taking it. <laughs> right. Live loudly, dance ruthlessly, evolve unapologetically means so much more to me now than it did then. Yeah. And I'm it's so interesting how that works because even Turn Up Dance Fitness, I titled Turn Up Dance. First of all, my first name on YouTube was Fancy Tancy Fitness. Stop it. I can't. Yep. Wait, and does this still exist? No. We need to put I mean, this yeah, like side there. by side with my my blog, Love Lindsay, and all the branding was like pink and purple. I love it. I love when you mention your your first names, but Fancy Tancy Fitness, and it just didn't feel like me. I was like, I'm not fancy. And <laughs> this saying the word fancy, I think of my dog now, but Fancy Tansy Fitness was my original name. So I changed it to Turn Up because I was like, yeah, like that's more like beast mode yeah. and like turn up, party. <laughs> and so I it meant like being loud and being loud about your personality, being loud with your dance moves, turning up the volume on everything metaphorically mm-hmm. and the music and all that stuff. And then like two, three years into it, a friend of mine told me to Google 
the real def the first definition of turn up and it is to be found by chance especially after being lost and it's crazy because that's what turn up is it's coming home to yourself mm -hmm. after getting lost and being everything for everybody or what you think you're supposed to be and it's just a constant coming home to yourself and so that's what turn up means to me now and i feel like that's the also representation of those phrases of live loudly dance ruthlessly evolve unapologetically but evolve unapologetically is a whole thing i think we all like to talk about evolution we all like to talk about transformation we all want that but what it requires you to become and to be and the decisions you have to make the the way you have to operate is unapologetically it truly you can't evolve the way you want to evolve without unapologetically attached to it like i don't think there is mm -hmm. evolution without an unapologetic piece to it mm. what do you think it's i mean i'm like thinking about the reality of that even with some of the things we were talking about the other day it's to me the way that has shown up is being willing to make the decisions that people aren't going to understand being in this season where I don't think I realized how I was probably the one pinning the quotes about being unapologetic and I've only been apologetic same in my growth. Well, I think that's is another, this yeah. okay with you? Is everyone comfortable here? Yes. You one random person in the back that I don't actually even know you're not comfortable with it. Let me just stay here and see if I can win you over before I move forward. What is that? the midwest yeah we can blame I mean, it on that we're not gonna blame it on the midwest but there's so many things yeah i think it's it's a lot of things i think it's conditioning mm -hmm. i've only ever been modeled by women i really look up to and women who are really a part of my like very formative years of prioritizing everyone else's needs before mine mm -hmm. and it starts to actually what i'm realizing now and some of you in the deeper work that i'm doing in therapy and in like getting to those deeper roots mm -hmm. is realizing how much it was so tied to this belief that if i prioritize me if i do what's best for me it makes me a bad person to my core mm -hmm. which went completely against the identity that i have of myself my view of myself as a good person as someone who genuinely does care mm -hmm. It's to realize that some of us have like very deep rooted programming around always asking for permission, always checking in to make sure that this is best for everyone before I check in. Is it best for me? Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how deep that programming went. I'm actually still working to unwind it. And I, I can't wait to see how that shows up in a dance class because mm -hmm. there's there's even ways that I see it, the residual of it show up in how free or not free I feel to just move. Yeah, I think we connect so much on that aspect of life because I think a lot of our journey is happening in a parallel mm -hmm. fashion of realizing how much we do that. And I love that about myself. And I think you've said that too, like you love that you care about people so much, but I think what's hard about it is realizing that when you do prioritize yourself and your growth, you're going to lose people that benefited off of you sacrificing yourself. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the realization of like, I'm only going to serve the people that I need to serve if I do prioritize my growth and my evolution as well. And so it's such a balance, but I am, I am truly on that journey too of finding the balance of showing up for people and recognizing that I want to be giving and serve. And then also realizing that prioritizing myself sometimes is the best way to serve. I think in regards to evolution, losing people and even the people that the person that I was, like all the things that you lose in committing to that is, I think you said it at dinner the other night of like a heartbreak over and over and over again. And that's the stuff that people don't talk about. It's like the deepest meaning of what it is to evolve unapologetically. I don't mm -hmm. think I realized until like this very conversation how, how little I have had the experience of true evolution that's unapologetic. And I think I'm starting to scratch the surface. I think so are you. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why having community of others who are like, I'm freaking out. Are you freaking out? Or like, this was really fucking hard. I had to have this conversation. I had to make this decision. And I can't tell the world the whole reason behind it. Let's talk a little bit about that part because like the responsibility that comes along with leadership. I actually think I have to go. <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> um, look at the time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, but it's real, right? Because yeah. it's like, this is the part that if I could skip one part of evolving unapologetically, it would be this. It's I didn't understand the weight of responsibility that comes with leadership to lead in a way that's in integrity with who I am and my character would mean that I'm going to make decisions and have to allow people to make up whatever interpretation they have about that because it doesn't actually feel in integrity with me to go and share the whole story, nor does it actually serve the greater good. And the weight of that, I don't think we give enough credit to the people who are leading that way because we don't know to give them credit because they aren't out there saying, well, here's what happened and you don't know the real story, but there might be another person out there who's sharing their side of the story and it, it's, it's not the full picture, but choosing to lead, and I watch you do this over and over again, Choosing to not defend is sometimes the most powerful stance to take. And we had this conversation a year ago about like some stuff that was coming up that you were battling. I've had seasons where I was being completely misunderstood and there was just something inside me that knew I wasn't supposed to go and defend myself. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to allow my true character to show itself, reveal itself. And ultimately, if I really am who I say I am, that act, that will come. It'll come clean on the other side. Yep. I'm like, what do you want to say to that, if anything? And I know like this has been such a real thing we've connected over. Yeah. So I compare it to those sports movies like Remember the Titans, Coach Carter. I'm, I'm sure there's the classics. a plethora of more. Yeah, the classics. And the new coach comes in and... He's, or even Ted Lasso. Did you watch Ted Lasso? I love, oh I've watched Ted Lasso multiple times. Oh my gosh. For that reason. Love that guy. Love that whole, whole thing. But these leaders come in and they're committed to their vision and doing it their way. And they're looked at sideways. They're looked at crazy. The fans who are ride or die for the teams are like, what is he doing, you know? And the, the team is like very on edge about the decisions being made, about the standard of which is being required that wasn't required before. And they stay committed to their vision. And in turn, eventually, if they're patient, they one by one start to buy in to the process. And I think as a coach, as a leader, you have to be willing to sit in, yeah, things are going to be different. The standard is being raised and I'm going to test some things that you've never seen before and we're going to go there and I am committed to this. And if you are not willing to come along for the ride, then that's your choice. But if you are, then I want you to be a part of it. And I think those movies just are such great examples of they weren't loved and welcomed right away because mm -hmm. what they were doing was so different. And I think that that's part of being misunderstood is like, if you want to do great things, if you want to be great, you have to be willing to be different than what people are expecting you to be mm -hmm. and be patient with them buying into that vision. And I think that's been a big part of my journey is letting people be okay with disagreeing with my decisions and continuing to stay true to what I know that the end game is. I played college basketball and I remember talking mad shit about my coach all the time. Like we would sit around and we would, we would sit around after practice and I'm sure my coach was in there watching film analyzing plays, going through sponsors to get us money to get us shoes. And she's doing all these things while we just went to practice. We thought we had the hardest life of the, that there was. We came back and sat around, ate our food and talked crap about the decisions that she was making. And now looking back, I 
had no idea what I was talking about, first of all. And then second of all, I've messaged her multiple times and been like, how did you sit there in silence and not say a word as we were saying all these things and questioning you? And she just laughed. She's like, ha, ha, ha. And I was like, wait, what's the answer? <laughs> what's the answer here? <laughs> yeah. And she just laughed at me. But wow. Yeah. So I think hmm. it's being OK with that. But it is so hard to be judged and misunderstood by people that you care about so much and to have your character questioned when it's like, wait, I've done this, 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 and this. And now that I do this one thing that you might disagree with because of your perception of it, now you're challenging my character. That's the part that's like so hurtful. And to me, the biggest hurdle for me the past year has been not allowing myself to close up and be jaded by that and continuing to take risks on people, continuing to bet on myself, continuing to tell my story. Whereas I'm like, a lot of the times I want to be like, you don't get to hear this anymore. Yeah. You don't get to know this about me. You don't like, and it's the balance of remaining open, yeah, but also learning to protect yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. It's that delicate balance of boundaries and allowing people to kind of show you how much access they deserve to you, but also keeping your heart open because spe specifically for you, and also this is true for me, the heart of what you're doing is what draws people in. It's what makes people buy into your vision. So if we close that off, we actually cut off the lifeblood of our vision. Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting question. I don't know. It just came to mind. So I'm just curious. Do you think you could have created what you've created and become who you've become without going through those seasons where you've been massively misunderstood and your character has been challenged? Do you think there was a way you could have created the success you've had without going through that? I think that I created success prior to recognizing that I was being misunderstood. I think I oh, thank God. just wasn't paying attention to that. But also <laughs> I think that the level that I want to be at could not have happened and will not happen without me learning that I have a pattern of caring too much what people think. And God, the universe is smacking me upside the head over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Like you are not, you have to learn this lesson here in order to go there. And I see that so clearly, but I also still fall into the same patterns of caring too much what people think. And I think that's another misconception about me because I'm turned up and I'm like getting after it. And I look unapologetic when I dance. But as you said, like I'm one of the most apologetic person. I, I have this one reel where I'm like in class, I'm I'm rapping Megan the Stallion and I'm like, get the out of the way. Or that's not the lyrics, but whatever. I'm like, screw her, da da da. And then the next one is like, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. I literally, and that's like me in real life versus me in turn up. And it's <laughs> never related more to a post that you've done because it is, it's like it. And it's, I think what's so interesting about that is I would probably be the person looking at the versions of us now, if it was previous me just starting out. And I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that like these women I looked up to also had these same struggles or they could reach that success and they still deal with like, gosh, it really hurts my feelings when people misunderstand me. But like, mm -hmm. then you get here and you realize that I don't think that those, those things that become like our Achilles heel ever completely go away because I don't, yeah. to say like, I love the advice that people will give people pleasers, like just don't care what people think. Like, Thank you, Susan. Yeah. I had never considered that, <laughs> but that's actually like telling me not to breathe air because the same part of me and my personality that makes people feel drawn in and lets them know that I really do care. Like I care so deeply about people I've never met. I love them whether I've never met them or not. And it's the same thing that is, it's like the same two sides of the same coin. I can't turn off the part that makes me authentically who I am without being susceptible to this part where it's like a pendulum. If I swing too far, I start to care more about what other people think than what I know to be true. And I just have to notice where that balance is. Yeah.
because I don't ever want to be so far on the range of I don't care. And I'm, like you said, cutting myself off because I've been hurt so many times because right. that actually cuts off my power source right. and my authenticity. Mm -hmm. But I have to just notice where if I'm in a moment where I'm suffering, I'm having a really hard time with a decision. Am I just putting too much weight on someone else's opinion or waiting for everyone else to buy in or validate this? When like when I think about you, you are a true visionary. You see things that people don't see. They can't buy into something because it doesn't exist yet other than in your imagination. So you have to have the courage to go there and lead the way and paint the vision, invite them along. But they're not going to see it until all of a sudden they're like, this is dope. I knew all along. And you're like, I have receipts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also think your mess is your message over and over mm -hmm. and over again. So you continuing to share that people pleasing and wanting permission that still is a part of your story of the way that you're impacting and again it goes back to am i letting these things hold me back or am i using it to be a part of my story and how i'm still moving forward anyways yeah and i think that your ability to tap into i'm still dealing with this but i'm still here and doing this is what inspires people. It's not gonna inspire somebody to chase after things if you're like, yeah, I don't care what people think and I, like this comes easy to me and da da da. Right. It's like, no, it's inspiring because you are facing it and still showing up anyways. Mm -hmm. And that's the message that women need to hear is it's not gonna go away. Your doubt isn't gonna go away. Your people pleasing mm -hmm. might not go away completely. We all care what people think of us, let's be honest. and. How are you operating anyways? That's what's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And I have to remember that too. Yeah. It's such a reminder to document more and show up messy earlier, not only to inspire the people who are following you, but it's a way to re-inspire yourself. Yeah. I also have to tell me if you feel this way. I have to remind myself to show up messy now. Yeah. It was easy for me to show up messy then because I don't think I even realized it was messy. Yeah. I was just showing up with nothing to lose. Yeah. Chasing after my dreams. I thought I was the shit. Like I was like, look at me go. I'm doing it. And this is fun. I was living my best life. And now that I have something to lose, now that I've built something, that's when I actually have more of a perfectionist. Mm. I, I have to, I have to remind myself that I don't always have to be what people expect me to be now that I've created this brand, now that I've become this person. It's like, I have to go back to the basics of allowing myself to show up messy, even though I'm this thing that people have expectations from now. Mm -hmm. I so feel that. What does that look like for you? Like in this current season right now, what does an example of you showing up messy look like for you? Well, I need to do a better job of it, I think is my first answer of being on my stories and not saying things the right way or mm -hmm. not having makeup on all the time or not look, showing people that I'm still messy, like quite literally in my home, mm -hmm. mess everywhere <laughs> and showing the, but I think it's interesting because I think just being me unapologetically or authentically. Mm actually is showing up messy in ways that, again, I don't even realize it. So like last night I posted a video of me dancing and I had some people message me about being thankful that I showed myself sweating so much. And I was like, oh. You're welcome. I mean, that's a real, a real thing. Mm. And it's like, to them, that's me being unapologetic. But to yeah. me, I'm like, geez, that's what you're thinking about? Right. To the or sweat? It probably shows a place where they don't feel free to show up yeah. as that version. So they're acknowledging it in you because it made them feel more free. And that's so true. It's We never know the little nuances of what's inspiring someone. You know what? I, I think 100% that, and this can be us publicly holding ourselves accountable and each other in front of the world to say like more of that. I think I've been navigating in this season where I'm going through a lot of really deep transformation and a lot of really deep change, knowing how to continue showing up, being honest that it's been a really tough season while also not feeling ready to share all the details of that 
has been interesting. Have you ever navigated a season like that? And how do you support yourself to be Jeez. that messy version? I, I mean, I feel like we're kind of both there right now too, of like mm -hmm. figuring that out, I guess, just in the moment, what feels appropriate. Cause I also know that it's not authentic for me to show up and just spill all the tea while it's still not, it's just not really for public consumption right now. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it never will be. I, was going to ask you the question that you're asking me, how I you're you doing do it. it, because I think you do a great job of saying, I'm going through something, I'm going through deep stuff. And that's all I'm going to tell you right now, but here's what I'm learning. Here's what I'm struggling with. And I think that's really a great way to share yourself without, there's a difference between like being transparent and vulnerable and then like revealing it all. And I think I've made the mistake. Remember I, in the beginning of this, I was like, I hit the bottom and I'm like, can't do that again. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's how I've a major part of my evolution. But I think in the beginning of my journey, I shared so much that I had to learn the hard way that sometimes sharing that much holds me back from my own healing and slows me down because I'm sharing an open wound versus a scar. And then what happens is I'm hearing everyone else's voice. I'm taking in their opinions and I'm not giving myself space to hear myself and what I need. And it's a pattern that I've seen myself do almost probably to a, on like sub on a subconscious level to not ha have to sit there with it. Like, yeah, I think, um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like I will try to turn it into the lesson and try to coach my people through it and what I'm going through as soon as I possibly can rather than coaching myself through it first. Mm -hmm. And I think navigating that has been a whole thing. But I think I've just, I've revealed too much because sometimes too what happens is you share emotionally and then things change and people aren't a part of the process to get to the other side and then they're judging the other side and all the stuff that comes with that. And yeah. so I am still navigating all of that. I also think a lot of times I'll just keep saying to myself, that's going to go in the book. That's going to go in my book. Yeah. That's going to go in my book. And so letting myself be patient with sharing my story. Like I don't have to share it right now. I don't have to share mm -hmm. it in the way that you all want it. I don't have to share it in the way that I feel right now. It will be shared in a way that's impactful because it's a part of my story but just because I'm not sharing it right now as I'm still trying to understand it myself doesn't mean that it's not going in the book and it's going to it's going to be a good story one day, you know? And something that you get to share from more of a healed place like you said. Yeah. I feel like someone listening probably needed to hear that because there's also this pressure of like be vulnerable, be authentic that doesn't have to mean sharing it all. And I think only individuals will know what's authentic for them. Mhm. Mm the thing I'm realizing I actually have just as much, I, I actually think I'm more comfortable sharing, hey, I'm going through a hard time. I'll share the details when and if I'm ready and to the extent that I'm ready. I'm more comfortable sharing the things I struggle with than successes. Do you struggle with that? Hmm, tell me more about that. I would rather share with someone the personal challenge I'm bumping up against I feel really awkward sharing something. I don't know why the example that's coming to mind is like in the last year as I've gotten to go on like these girls trips with women where then I realize the whole world is looking on, not the whole world, that's, a, that's dramatic. <laughs> a lot of people will look on and feel like, why am I not included? Why am I not good enough? It's like, I don't like for the good things that are happening to pos have the possibility of triggering someone else, even though I know I need to see women winning so that I know it's possible, it's aspirational for me. So I think I've struggled more with sharing the good things and the opportunities that come. And I think the, the reason is because no one ever knows the full story yeah. of like what went into that. It's like, I can feel the energy of just like whatever emotions come with that. And people are just seeing like this little microcosm of, oh, this cool thing happened. You were on the podcast today, but it's like, 
you know, no one realizes like the depth of even just like the friendship that we've built and how I've been watching you and admiring you and learning from your journey and how you're showing up. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's almost like I, I'm more uncomfortable with the possibility that something good that's happening will trigger feelings in other people, jealousy, envy, whatever, feelings of not good enough. And I'd rather keep all that stuff hidden when I know it's powerful for me to see women share it more unapologetically. Mm. I feel that so much. And I think I think all women probably need to hear that. But at the same time, I think what I've realized, too, is women are still women in a lot of ways and they are judgy at times and oh I'm totally judgy at times <laughs> yes. let's just be honest oh my gosh. I am women <laughs> I am too and we are like um I was just talking about Beth who wrote a book and me yeah. being like you wrote a book in a year bitch like come on like <laughs> we love you how'd Beth. you do that <laughs> um and I'm obsessed and I'm celebrating her so hard yeah but I'm also there's envy there of like yeah man. so I think Everything that you just said to me is an example of all the things that we've talked about that we're battling of being misunderstood mm -hmm. in your celebration mm -hmm. of not being acknowledged for all that you did to get there mm. of separating yourself from people. I that's think it. that's a huge thing. That's it. Like you don't want them to think that they couldn't do it too, or that you're different from them or that you aren't battling all the things that you're battling mm -hmm. and and it's a, it separates yeah because people separate themselves from you but i think that's probably why it's easier to share the hard stuff because that's what brings us all together is our pain and when women see that you're dealing with stuff too there's a connection there and we all just want to connect with each other we all just want to be loved and love and at the end of the day, that's what mm -hmm. we're seeking is connection. And so the fear of losing connection mm -hmm. is real Yeah, for me too. And being judged, I think. Thank you for that life coaching session right there. Is it? What, I, what do you think? Well, I feel I'm talking, like- I'm just talking out loud no, and I feel like- I'm, You just took me to, to church and therapy in- I think I blacked out. What did we even just talk about? Great, we have it recorded, but- Okay, good. I don't think I, I think especially hearing you reflect it back in that way, in the journey and the season that I'm in of looking at some of those deeper fears and what keeps me from really fully expressing the version of me that like, I still feel like I'm- I'm barely scratching the surface, but everything so far has come back to this fear of losing connection with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. That's why I've been able to create what I've created. You've created the most incredible community, this deep connected community, because connection is so important to us. But then when you realize that your role is to evolve unapologetically and continue to set the bar that the community is invited along mm -hmm. on, it's like there are those periods of time where separation is necessary. Yeah. Our community actually needs to see us evolve or they would lose interest. Yeah. I've heard you say that so many times and I, that plays in my head often that my community needs to see me evolve yeah. or that my my people, my friends, my I need to see me evolve. And that it's necessary. I think like you say that so much and that's such a great reminder mm -hmm. for sure. So anyone who's like on this journey with us, I think just what I hope is that listening to this makes people feel really seen in that journey. And I think that's why, you know, we've become friends in the season that we have because there has to be, there's, there's naturally going to be that separation between some of the people that maybe used to be like your running mates, but it's, it highlights the importance of then finding the people that make you feel that sense of connection at the level that's also expanding you so you can continue to lead the way for the people who are following a step or two behind. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part where, you know, when people say it's lonely at the top or it's this or it's that, I don't think it has to be. I think that's if you choose to let it be because you're afraid of losing that connection. So you just cut yourself off from it totally. Mm -hmm. I think that's been this interesting season of keeping my heart open to cultivating the connections that I actually need. They're my lifeline right now. But realizing that those connections will evolve and to let it be okay when a connection does evolve. Mm 
-hmm. because I'm just growing at the pace that I'm growing. I'm not trying to outgrow anybody or trying to leave people behind, but I'm doing people a disservice if I try to slow down my process to have to enable them to catch up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there was a there was a question in there, just really some random thoughts. No, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, I I think that's real. Mm hmm. So what are you most excited about for this next season for you personally and then for your brand separately? Because I think you're on a similar journey of me of like there's a vision for the brand for sure. But then there's this also this you stepping into your own as a creator and as an individual brand. Man. (sighs) I feel like that's a great question. I'm really excited to be here in this moment with you right now. And Mm -hmm. I, after that, I got to figure out what happens after this moment. And I think I love that. That's, I need, I actually think I need to do a better job of planning and thinking ahead. But I think the person I'm becoming, and I, we, it's a little cliche because we say it all the time of like, it's all about the person you're becoming. But I'm excited to continue to see what I'm capable of. And the things that I didn't even know were possible. Because even sitting here talking to you, going to dance classes in LA, like that was never even a thought in my mind. Yeah. Never. Like I was talking to Chandler, my sister earlier, and I was saying being better at dance was never even something I sought after when I started doing dance fitness. And it's so many people say now, like I couldn't do dance fitness because I am not a good dancer. And I'm like, that was never something that stopped me. I never thought that was a requirement for dance fitness at all. I've just poured my soul into what I'm doing. I leave it all out on the floor and I've gotten better in the process. And I've found a passion in dance and the way to better myself and express myself and all those things. And now I'm here in LA at playground and it's just crazy because I never would have thought that I knew I was going to do something. I, was the person who was like, I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to be somebody. And I still say that to myself, like, I'm going to be somebody. But at the end of the day, I, I'm i allowing space for magic for what that looks like. And I think the success of that is allowing myself to say that to you and not pretend like I have a plan yeah. and not beat myself up for not having a plan, almost celebrating the fact that that's my superpower too, is like the process of trusting myself to leave space for magic is what's going to create it. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm like, that's a quote in itself. (laughs) And it's actually what, it's so similar to what I realized the journey of building this business has taught me is that for me, it's true that I'm not supposed to see that far into the future. I can tap into feelings that I want to experience about myself. And it's always kind of like, I want to experience more freedom in my body, in my self-expression, in my ability to expand unapologetically. Like I know things I want to experience, but then the how or exactly what that looks like from a business sense, I don't know. And I don't think I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. And that has been a superpower. But you asked me a really powerful question at dinner the other night when I was sharing just like the, the reality of some of the things that I'm going through. And it was a similar question of what I was excited about. And it just gave me this opportunity to kind of pick my head up in a season that has felt really heavy mm-hmm. and realize, holy shit, like if you're willing to evolve unapologetically over and over and over again, and the more you can tap into the unapologetic part, it's a true blank slate of being able to create anything that I want. Mm-hmm pretty quickly because I'm letting go and shedding a lot of the layers that I was using as a protective mechanism to hold me back. Yeah. I think I'm terrified. (laughs) Yeah. I think you and I both are really in love with the work. Like Mm -hmm. we like working. Yeah. I love my job. I love working. It's you. I think you've said this before. It's like, that's my hobby. Like that's what I like to do. And through my own growth, I've also realized that I don't allow myself to enjoy the fruits of my labor because Mm -hmm. I think it's going to separate me because I think I feel guilty about it or shame around it. Or if I actually, I actually think if I pick my head up 
and enjoy it too much, I'll lose focus or I'll lose momentum or I'll lose what I've created. Yeah, like lose your edge. Yeah. And so I stay head down grinding. And I think a big part of both of our journeys right now is allowing ourselves to enjoy what we've created and tap into leaving space for what is fun to us or what do we like and what lights us up out even outside of the work that we love to do and that is exciting and scary and all the things i'm literally listening to you say that saying this looking at your hat that says enjoy the now i know <laughs> i wore it on purpose to remind myself to like well, thank you Just for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so if people want to connect and, you know, it's like, yes, there's the whole world of turn up and it's been such a game changer for me, but I want people to know where to connect with you because having you and like being intentional in this season, curating my social media feed to only be showing me people who expand me, you wow. are one of those people that every time I see something you're creating, something you're writing, the way you show up and you show me the transformation, it reminds me that I'm on the same journey and what's possible. So where can people find you? We'll, of course, link it all in the show notes as well. Well, I'm on Instagram a lot, Turn Up with Tansy, and we have a turnupdancefitness.com is the website, and we're about to put on a I mean, our conferences are the same. The same weekend. The same weekend. We're, we're not going to talk about we're it. We're not talking about that. But Cut that part. But <laughs> <laughs> we're really sad about it because it happened kind of on accident. But truly, like, the community that you are creating, and I feel like the fact that we see this in each other, I know it means a lot when you acknowledge it in me because you know what it takes to com create community because you oh have created gosh. one of the most diehard, authentic like it, it is the living embodiment of your mission, especially the evolve unapologetically part. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's looking for growth expansion and you you feel like dance, even if you're not a dancer, it could be an access for your evolution. Oh my it's gosh. been one of the best things I've added to my life in the past year that. and a half. I love that. I Everywhere I go, we just performed at a at an event in LA, which was another dream that I didn't know was a dream. Mm -hmm. And women there left inspired to dance more. And I never realized that because dance is such a huge part of my life mm. that I'm like, wait, you're not dancing? You're not dancing at any point you in your fix day? This immediately. Yes. And so I think go to a turn up dance fitness class and just or let online. Loose. Like, and, or even online, if you're yeah. in a city where it doesn't exist, it's online, it's everywhere. Yeah, we have some YouTube, turn up with Tansy YouTube videos, but also, yeah, online, all the things, but dance more. Like, oh, and that was another thing I was going to say. Judy something is the creator of Jazzercise. So, first of all, don't hate on Jazzercise, anybody, because it's like 50 years in of the game. Yeah. And I mean, they still exist. They're still doing it 50 years later. And she created it around a time where like women weren't even supposed to have credit cards type thing. So she wrote a book and she defined musicality. So she defined musicality as being, I'm going to mess up the words, but being able to hear the cue of the beat and allowing yourself to accept it like see it for what it is and then take action accordingly and accordingly. And I think both of us have kind of tapped into that being the way we want to exist and live. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think dance is so important because it allows us to physically begin to listen to the moment mm. and let the moment move us. And the closer you can connect to yourself in the moment, the more you're going to be able to connect to people and your mission and where you're going. And I feel like it's a practice. Dance is a practice of the musicality of life and becoming one with the beat. Boom. <laughs> Let's go. Twerk sesh. I mean, I mean that's a nice bonus. <laughs> yeah, no, that's your camera. I want to just ask one more question, and I feel like I could actually sit and talk to you all day. Mm -hmm. Me but too. this is kind of going back to that ability to be present and just like celebrate yourself. It's the same question I ask everyone at the end of the episodes. 
just an opportunity to acknowledge yourself for something great, big or small that maybe you realize now you stepped over, like in the moment you didn't pause and say like, yeah, actually I'm really proud of myself for that. Jeez. You don't have to cry yet. I know. (laughs) But if I ask what is a recent powerhouse moment that you want to publicly celebrate with all of us right now, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Right here, right now, being here with you. And I think feeling, I don't know why I'm going to cry. I think feeling grounded sitting here with you rather than, did I say that right? I mean, I'm sure there's definitely been a few things where I'm like, stop stuttering. Don't, don't say that. Be confident, but also feeling very calm and, and that is a reflection of you too and what you've created. But I think sitting here and being able to be present with you Mm -hmm. rather than in my head is a reflection of the work that I've done on myself and I'm celebrating. I'm going to make sure that I leave here and celebrate that versus analyzing the things that I, I wish I would have done differently, which I will still do that because I, again, I think that's what makes me great is I'm Mm going to leave here and I'm going to recognize the things that I could do better, but I also am not going to attach that to my worth of being here sitting with you and I think I'm just proud of the person that I am today. I'm I'm really proud of who I am sitting here. I think that's like the most beautiful acknowledgement any of us could ever give to ourselves. Yeah. And like permission for everyone listening to pause and you perfectly captured it. It's like to be proud and be grateful for the version of ourselves that's right here right now because that's all we have. Mm-hmm. And let it be okay that we're of course going to want to expand. That's why we're here. Right. You, I mean, you inspire me in every way that you show up, but I'm really grateful to have this moment in time captured. Me too. Because I think ourselves in five years are going to look back and just be so proud of the versions that we are now. Yeah. Will you share something that you're proud of? I don't think anyone has actually ever turned that question on me. (laughs) I need to know. It's perfect that it's you. I... I'm so proud of myself right now for how I'm showing up for myself and prioritizing myself while still not losing or shutting down my heart in a time where it would be really, really easy to do that. And I think that I've never experienced that duality of showing up fiercely for myself first Mm -hmm. and still having, realizing that there is actually enough to still love people through their process, even even if it means that it's evolving in a different way and it's going to create some major change. I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. Well, we're just a crying mess now. It's beautiful. In the most beautiful way. And this is just really what you do for people. You crack hearts open through movement, through how you show up in the world. And I'm so grateful for how you've done that for me. I love that. And I feel the same way about you and I am obsessed with you in all the ways and thank you for seeing me for more than just the dance part of it, for seeing beyond that and the leader that I am and can be and I appreciate that so much. And I see in you the way that life's hard things are actually able to soften us and I think I'm I'm watching you navigate that. And I think that's inspiring to recognize that sometimes the things that we think harden us, they might harden us for a little bit, but then you become a softer and stronger version. Mm. And that's what I want to be too. So I see that in you. Thank you so much. Thank you.